It's great to meet you, Samir. Nice to meet you as well. And thank you for having me here today. No problems at all. So um, tell us a bit about Paramedic Council. Like I know that there's been some great initiatives to help the aging community, the disability community, and um, I think it's uh, very important for this Paramount region. Like, could you just talk a bit about that? Absolutely. So as a city, I think um, we have 20% of our population have some form of disability. That's the statistics generally. And uh, over 28% almost of our population are over 50 years of age. Now we have a responsibility obviously to look after all community. And uh, in this in the last four years, I've try to do a, uh, take a range of initiatives to in, increase and improve the engagement with people with disability. Some of them are around, um, for example, in making our city age-friendly and uh, inclusive. As part of that, we look at the footpaths, make sure that the footpaths are easy to access. We look at uh, a range of other measures we have taken um, to make the city age-friendly and um, inclusive. Um, we have also done work in terms of, um, um, for people with disability, if I can take a step back and explain the process of submissions. So when there's a deal, for example, um, the submissions are supposed to be in writing. Yeah. Now, that to some extent disadvantages people who might not be able to write and they might have some disability. Yeah. I've taken an initiative where we have, um, uh, where we have provision for people with disability to call a number and then they can put a submission verbally and that will be recorded as a submission. And that's something which is quite unique, which we have taken um, uh, on board yeah. in Parramatta and I would like this to be uh, spread and extended to other councils as well, which provides people with disability um, a voice in council and yeah. in, in, in terms of any submission um, to be done to council. Most recently, I've taken the initiative to uh, celebrate and acknowledge the work of people with disability by celebrating uh, International Day for People with Disabilities on 3rd of December. So right. in the next few weeks, um, on 3rd of December, we will be uh, running a range of events um, to again um, acknowledge the work of people with disability and to look at uh, the, um, uh, their contribution to our community. That's really good. Um, it's like we all know how difficult it can be sometimes to submit to council, like yes. all the red tape and yeah, it can be really, you know, Okay. quite difficult so that, that's a really good thing that you're doing for the community um one other thing that i'd love to hear about is how paramount council is being very transparent on a lot of things and talk to us about that sure and that's extremely important for me personally as well that um, as council as local government we keep the faith and trust of people in the system and one way to go is to obviously report back on a range of things that comes that happens within council one of my initiatives has been to create a dashboard um, within council to inform the community about what's happening in the council. It could be in terms of time frame, it could be the complaints we are receiving, it, it could be um, financials and so on. So that dashboard is in place now and uh, moving forward in the next term of council, I would like that to be improved further so that the management, the governance, uh, of, fine, of council is transparent to the community. People should be able to see how many, what, what council is doing. So, yeah. um, and I, I feel that to provide the services to the community which is required, the quality of that, those services will be dependent on the internal functioning of the council as well. So in that, uh, along those lines, it's extremely important that council is good sound financial management, the governance, and so on. And again, through this dashboard, we try to keep things transparent to the community. Yeah, I love that. That's that's really good, right? Like we can all see what's happening Absolutely. and just log into a portal and yes. understand that's exactly. Is. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, the environment obviously is always a pretty important topic today, as it should be. Um, now, I understand in Parramatta, you know, it is a sort of a robust city, it's growing, but trees are important, and today it's about 10% of canopy treetops, and now it's looking to be 20% going forward, which yes. is fantastic. Absolutely, I think that's something which we um, should not take for granted, the climate and uh, the environment, 
uh, we have we have taken a range of initiative in council to improve um, our uh, free canopy um, throughout the council. We have a target, but within the CBD, if I have a CBD, um, I felt that we our target and our current uh, tree canopy levels is not acceptable, uh, which stands at nine to ten percent at this stage. Uh, I took an initiative a few months ago for that to be changed, and we should be targeting to have twenty percent. Uh, tree canopy uh, in the CBD. Now that will help in a range of ways. You know, obviously it helps in uh, um, in cooling the climate. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, all proven. Um, plus, it also helps in people to have movement in the CBD uh, in summer days. It helps in. Uh, it looks nice. Yes. Um, looks green and clean. Um, so this range of advantages are having tree, and I think this is something which we have pushed for in this term of council, and will continue to advocate. Uh, for more trees in the city. That's yeah, great. You know, I, I'm the local. I grew up in Parramatta, sure. or out in Greystones, and it's great to see the actual city of Parramatta really evolving. It's some beautiful architecture, some nice buildings coming through, it, and in hearing, you know, these developments is really good. Sure. Um, one area too of the city, which is awesome, is uh, you know I've heard and you've talked a bit about this to me, is how it's evolving to a smart city. And you know, that's something that you know I, I love to hear. I, I do have my tech background, and obviously we hear about smart city it sort of relates to information technology. Also, as Dan, you have a quite a strong background in yeah, MIT, yes. and you have a good story about uh, the famous director De uh, David Cameron, where you actually did some work with yeah, yeah. James, so James Cameron, Cameron yeah. where you um, you know did some work with with that company. Yeah. But talk to us about the smart city. Sure. Uh, so that's something which is very close to my heart as well. Um, my background has been in technology and it's something which um, uh, I strongly believe that with good technology and good strategy based around technology, we can improve the quality of life of people. And it's not only about smart city, but also smart community where we have, uh, um, and there will be savings, there will be savings across the board, um, there will be, uh, it will improve the quality of life of our residents and community. Um, so some of the initiatives within Smart City um, are things like Flood Smart. It's an app which alerts you if there is a flood. Yeah. Um, we have also been working with uh, our partners to install sensors, uh, and we have chosen some sites where we can see um, things like uh, temperature. What kind of trees we should be planting, which will roll over the temperature. Different trees. Um, would have different, will have different temperatures underneath. Oh. And these sensors will help us to, uh, the data will help us. We also have smart bins, for example. So the bins don't need to be collected or seen every day. When it's full, it sends an alert and someone will come and look at the bins. So we have smart bins. We have um, just embarked on smart street. So that's the first smart street um, in our uh, in CBD on Phillips Street. And phase one of that has been completed. Um, it has again a range of um, um, gadgets which will help um, the businesses, people, um, including things like how fast we are roadway for safety. Yeah. Um, it has a monitor on the street, on, on Philip Street. So there are a range of initiatives that we have taken. We also got an award last year, um, uh, which was a very prestigious award for Smart City. Um, uh, and we were very proud of receive, to receive that award. So there's a range of initiatives which are in place uh, currently and moving forward, we would like to have a long-term strategy around Smart City um, to again with the view that we make the city smart but also our community smart. Yeah. Um, and I look forward to working on some of these projects in the uh, coming yeah. days. That's great. Right. There's a lot of opportunities for business, the community yes. like moving in this direction, I think it's you know it's great for everybody. It's awesome. Can I also add that you know one of the other things which we'll be doing as part of that is also to support start startups. Yes. So it could be any startup, it could be a technology startup. Yeah. Um, we already have some technology hubs, but moving forward, that's one of my initi you know initiatives and, and goal as well that we support local jobs, we support the startups, yeah. we encourage them to come to Parameter, provide them yeah. with the platform. That they stay in that on. Yeah, that's awesome. I know that there's a cyber hub now that's yes. recently started in, in the CBD, and you know, I think it's Western University. It's, right. Yeah, it's great yes. for emerging 
uh, youth and you know, potentially entrepreneurs. Yes. So this is a you know, great place to have Absolutely. it. Um, staying on the topic of um, technology, I also know there's, there's uh, a lot of work going into, say, laptops yes. that have come to their sort of end of life for business, but you, you've created a way that these laptops are being donated to, you know, people that need laptops and aren't fortunate to be able to buy new laptops. So, um, I mean, that's an area, as you know, uh, we live in a digital age and everyone needs to have a device, is it? Yeah. Whether you're looking for jobs, you're applying for you know something online. Um, and what I realized uh, during COVID, um, that a lot of organizations who were not able to raise funds, um, and most a lot of organizations in our community, they rely on funds, they rely on fundraising activities, which was all stopped during COVID. Um, some of these organizations would have clients, they would walk in to fill a form or do something, and obviously they don't have the funds to buy the laptops. Yes. So just a few weeks, a uh, couple of months ago, I took the initiative for council to donate all the used laptops. Um, they're all in good conditions, and I thought they should be donated to local community organizations instead of um, being thrown away. Yes. Um, and uh, so that's something which is in place. And in the next uh, three months, uh, we will be donating about 200 laptops, used laptops, to local community organizations through an expression of interest process. Yeah. Um, and I hope that will help. Uh, and this is one of the way, again, I think uh, we, uh, I see that we are the leaders in terms of being smart. Yes, that's great. That's really nice. Good to hear that's happening. Um, one last one we'll talk about is uh, uh, an initiative about silent heroes. There's people that are doing great work in the community and we, you know, most of the time we don't know who these people are. Yes. They, they go about doing things and wonderful things for people and you're bringing these people you know, to the public and yeah, that's, that sounds awesome. But how, what are you guys doing? How, how does that work? So, you know, when I started council um, four years ago, in the last four years I've met some extremely hardworking, passionate people who have been serving the community uh, for a long time. And when I say long time, I'm talking about in some cases 40 years, 50 yeah. years. Now they work, their work is seen, but they go unnoticed. Yeah. So we see what they have done, but we don't know who has done that. And this campaign, which I started to, uh, which is called Unsung Local Heroes, is to acknowledge the contribution of those individuals who have been uh, working hard behind the scenes for our community. And um, uh, I feel again very privilege to have uh, known them through my work in council, through my role in council. And um, we will continue this program. We have support from local um, um, newspapers as well, who publish every month um, those stories about um, yeah. unsung heroes, which I write. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, a, it's just a feel good. Um, you know, when you see these people, and I'll give an example of um, one person who was one of the local um, unsung heroes. He has been working um, close to his home for more than 40 years planting trees. Um, and uh, in peak summer when we had the drop, he would carry water cans from his home and plant and uh, water every single uh, plant. Well, he doesn't have to do that, but yeah. that's, you know, he's passionate. Now, trees which has, he has planted 40 years ago, they're all you know, shrubs and small plants, they're all big trees. People use them, this shade is reserved, a full area full of those trees. Yeah. Um, obviously, you don't know who has planted them. But through this exercise, um, I have highlighted the work that uh, this person has done and what he has achieved for the entire community. So um, I think there's so many of these ones, and if um, your viewers and audience know people in Parramatta who needs to be acknowledged, there are a lot of them. Yes. Um, and sometimes we don't see them. Yes. So this is uh, uh, the, init the initiative and the idea is to acknowledge their work. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice touch and very deserving for people that do so much for the community and, you know, unsung heroes, as you say. Yes. Um, could we have one final message to the community? Sure. Yeah, it'd be great. I think, you know, um, four years ago when I got into council, um, I wanted to give back to the community. That was my motivation to get into council. Over the last four years, I have been involved in a lot of campaigns and my motivation has been um, people and, and um, 
those campaigns has given me motivation again to run this stuff. Yes. Now, I would like through you again for people to um, keep the faith and trust in local government. And that's something which I work extremely hard to uh, keep that faith and trust. I would like them to um, have that faith and trust in the system and approach the local government um, and councils if they have an issue. I would also like them to keep the campaign going. So there's a lot of small groups um, who run different campaigns on behalf of um, their community advocacy groups. And I think I would again encourage them not to lose heart. If they have something which they are passionate about, you know, contact your local councillors, yes, to talk where you live, um, and uh, um, keep the work going. The elections are coming as well, and I would like to again to you uh, send a message that make the you know make a decision, make sure you vote on fourth of December, and make sure that you do your homework to see whom you're voting. Your vote is extremely important. These are the individuals who will be making the decision on your behalf. Um, for you. So it's extremely important that you do your homework, look at the candidates, call them. Their contact numbers might be out there. Call them, ask questions. This morning, this evening, in fact, when I was coming here, I had a call from one of the residents who called me and said, uh, I have a few questions. Yeah. And I spent, in traffic, I spent about 25 minutes with this uh, individual. Um, range of questions. I think that's what I would like people to do. I welcome yeah. those feedback. Yes, I welcome feedback. the questions. Yeah. Um, and I think this is it's absolutely important that uh, um, community. See, for me, again, a lot of work that I have done is not my work. Yeah. It's community's work. Sure. They have come to me with a problem and in some cases possible solution. I have just taken that to a next level the voice. Uh, yeah. to the voice. Yes, and that's what uh, I would like people to um, uh, look at. The voice, not the noise. There's not yeah. a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah. And I think keep the voice, uh, have the faith, um, you'll find people who will support you. Fantastic, Samir. Well, it's been a real pleasure to meet you. I wish you the very best and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Australia's first Indian magazine to have a national reach. Indus Age is the largest circulated South Asian magazine in Australia with five simultaneous editions. 55,000 copies printed monthly, 220,000 readers, largest network of clients, undisputed leader in community news. Indus Age is circulated in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth to over 525 outlets. Grab your copy now to get the latest on the community, news from India, Bollywood, music and much more. For more info, log on to www.indusage.com. Dot AU.